Coming up on today's show, Google's Waymo bids farewell to those little pod-like cars. Tesla says it will offer Model 3 reservation holders test drives on Model 3 by the end of this year. And BMW's investment arm spends big on electric buses. These stories and more coming next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, June 16th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and yes, after a three-week hiatus caused by an emergency trip back to the UK, I'm back in the studio with your weekly roundup of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation news. Late last year and early this, British firm Jaguar began to showcase its first ever all-electric model in the form of the Jaguar I-PACE concept car. Designed as a crossover SUV, the I-PACE is essentially Jaguar's answer to the Model X, complete with electric all-wheel drive and four second or less, 0 to 62 miles per hour, that's 0 to 100 kph sprint time. Well, this week, Jaguar confirmed that the I-PACE has now officially entered production with plans to officially launch the car this autumn at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Customers in Europe will be able to get their hands on one shortly thereafter, with markets outside Europe due to get the car in 2018. There's no word on pricing yet, but given Jaguar isn't exactly an affordable brand, don't expect the I-PACE to be far off a Model X in terms of cost. They've been a part of the Waymo, a Google self-driving car project program now, for several years, offering a curious view into a future where cars, free from the need of traditional steering wheels or controls, don't have to look like cars. But this week, we heard the tiny pod-like autonomous electric cars developed exclusively for the firm's autonomous vehicle program, known as koalas, fireflies, or gumdrops, depending on whom you ask, are to be retired, with future development focused on commercializing its autonomous vehicle technology for mainstream automakers, rather than building its own low-speed autonomous pods for cities. I'm sad to see those little pods go, but I'm hopeful that Waymo's autonomous drive program will continue to grow and improve as time passes. With the Tesla Model 3 due to enter into production in the next few months, we're seeing an increase in excitement from Tesla reservation holders as they get ever close to sitting behind the wheel of their brand new electric car. And this week, Tesla changed the language on the Model 3 portion of its website to confirm that test drives to reservation holders will begin to take place towards the end of 2017, reminding existing and new customers that those wanting a test drive of a Model S or Model X wouldn't have to wait at all. Another clear anti-sell tactic for Model 3, if you ask me. This comes on the back of the announcement made last week at Tesla's annual shareholder meeting that the company will only offer a choice of color and wheel configuration when production starts on Model 3 later this year. Those wanting more customization? Well, they'll have to wait a little longer, something I'm sure some customers won't mind, but many will. In addition to being General Motors' only long-distance electric car to date, the Chevrolet Bolt EV also happens to play an integral part in the company's autonomous vehicle research and development program, serving as a platform for both GM's own in-house testing as well as a test platform for GM's recently acquired, yet still fairly independent, autonomous vehicle company, Cruise Automation. Well, this week, GM announced that 130 new Chevrolet Bolt EVs had rolled off the production line in Michigan, complete with GM's latest second-generation autonomous vehicle hardware fitted. These cars, which are due to join 50 other autonomous Bolt EVs in test fleets across the US, were constructed using traditional mass production techniques, not retrofitted with hardware after production as most autonomous cars are. GM claims that it's the first time such a process has been used to build an autonomous vehicle but it seems to be ignoring Tesla production, where autonomous-ready cars have been produced en masse for a very long time. Yes, it's a technicality, but that little matter aside, I'm eager to see how GM's autonomous Bolt EV program grows with these new, smarter, autonomous cars on board. When Tesla first unveiled its supercharger network, Tesla CEO Elon Musk noted that Tesla's ultimate goal would be to power as many supercharger stations as possible from solar panels, perhaps even making the supercharger stations energy net positive, feeding energy generated but not used on site 
back to the local grid. That's not really happened yet, save for a few supercharger sites. But this time last week, Tesla CEO Elon Musk confirmed on Twitter that the company plans to convert all of its supercharger sites to solar power, outfitting them with photovoltaic solar panels and Tesla power packs to reduce the strain on the local utility grid. It's not clear what the time frame is here, but Musk has said that the end goal is to actually disconnect the majority of supercharger sites from the grid completely. That not only means Tesla supercharger networks will be completely carbon zero, but will also work independently from the grid, and they should work whatever happens. Although I'm not so sure about snow. Hmm. In the plug-in world, BMW is known for its i3 and i8 plug-in models, as well as an increasing range of plug-in hybrid variants to establish mainstream models, something I'm sure you will have seen an advert about recently, if you live in the US. But this week, BMW iVentures, BMW's investment arm, made a substantial investment in California electric bus company Proterra. The exact investment isn't known, but BMW, along with several other companies, including Al Gore's Generation Investment Management, form part of the $55 million six-round funding for the bus company, which has a 60% market share in the US and is currently working on longer-range buses and autonomous vehicle tech. I don't have the time to go into the investment here, but there is a more in-depth analysis from me from earlier on this week in the video playlist, so add it to yours when you're done here. It's been the subject of extreme speculation for the past few years, but last week at the Worldwide Developer Conference in San Francisco, Apple CEO Tim Cook confirmed that not only is Apple working on autonomous vehicle technology, but it sees it as one of the company's core technologies moving forward. Anyone who's kept an eye on the various permits being issued by the California DMV for autonomous vehicle testing will know that the cat has been out of the bag for Apple since April. But Cook's confirmation lets us know that Apple's self-driving car program isn't some skunkworks project anymore. As to where it'll go, well, Cook didn't say, but did note that for now, Apple wants to see where its autonomous vehicle technology takes it. Of course, unlike some companies, Apple is so flush with cash right now that it can drop several billion on such a program and not even notice. So this is going to be a very interesting project to watch indeed. For some time now, there's been a healthy amount of scepticism that suggests that the Chevrolet Bolt EV is nothing more than a compliance car destined for limited sales volume and limited availability. Indeed, this week, we've had several people saying as much in the comments section to these videos. But this week, GM confirmed that it's rolling out nationwide availability for the Bolt EV a month early, shifting the final few months of rollouts forward to include an additional five states by the end of this month and making the car available to all 50 states by the end of August, not September. With Bolt EV sales starting to slowly ramp up, I'm guessing that GM has also decided to push forward sales to help it have an edge on the upcoming Tesla Model 3, which launches this autumn, and the next generation Leaf, which also launches this autumn. Do you agree? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Safety, not electric vehicle range or performance, has long been said to be Tesla's top priority, with the Tesla Model S setting new high standards for luxury vehicles, and any car for that matter, when it underwent crash testing at launch. Well, now it's the turn of the Tesla Model X, which was awarded a five-star safety rating across the board from the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration this week, becoming the first ever SUV to do so. Of the tests, Tesla said that the large lithium-ion battery pack found under the floor of every Model X means that the car is the most stable SUV on sale, with a lower rollover risk, in fact, the lowest rollover risk of any SUV to date. The only car to beat the Model X in crash testing? Well, that'll be the Model S, setting a very high level of expectation that Tesla will need to get its Model 3 in that high-ranking five-star category too. Given past experience, I think it'll happen, don't you? You might be forgiven for thinking that the humble car tyre has pretty much devolved as much as it will, except for perhaps compound tweaks here and there to improve tread wear, road holding and fuel economy. But this week, Michelin unveiled a brand new concept tyre that hints at what the tyre of the future might be like. And it's quite something. A 3D printed organic based tyre that's tubeless and airless, can't blow out or puncture, and is constantly feeding back data about grip, wear and road conditions to the car itself to improve traction, user experience and fuel economy. It's quite the concept and I have no idea if it will ever reach production. But I've included a link below so you can check it out for yourself after this show. 
It's long been known that the deployment of autonomous vehicles in the wild will lag behind development on the same, thanks to the long and sometimes arduous legislative process that must be gone through before having a fully level 5 autonomous car drive itself down the road, meaning it's entirely conceivable that some countries will get fully autonomous cars before others. And this week, we heard that the House Energy and Commerce Committee in Washington, D.C. is getting close to announcing a bipartisan package that will make it far easier and far quicker for autonomous vehicle testing to begin. In all, there are 16 potential proposals being considered, including an exemption for up to 100,000 autonomous vehicles from current safety standards, making it possible for automakers to sell cars without steering wheels or other traditional controls, for example. It's going to take some time, but it seems the US doesn't want to lag behind when it comes to self-driving cars. So I'll be sure to give you an update when I have one. And finally, Tesla may make the safest cars out there today, as I've already mentioned in this show, but according to US insurance company AAA, Tesla owners are far more likely to make a claim against their auto insurance than other car customers are, causing the company to hike premiums for Model S owners and Model X owners by as much as 30% in some states. AAA says its data shows that Tesla Model S and Model X customers are more likely to get into crashes than some of its counterparts, although we should note here that Tesla has disputed the way in which AAA is comparing the Model S and Model X to other cars from different classes. But the real kicker is the cost to repair them, something AAA says is far more expensive than most conventional cars. It's not clear if other insurance companies will follow suit, but I'm sure it's something you should think about if you're considering buying a Tesla and need to figure out just how much it will cost to insure. And on that note, I'm afraid it's time for me to say goodbye. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Visit transportevolve.com for more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation news or join in the conversation on Twitter at Transport Evolved. And if you liked what you saw today and want to help us make more shows like this, please consider making a donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign. I've left a link for which in the description below, and there's a clickable one at the end of today's video. Given how unpredictable things are right now, frankly, cancer can go take a hike. I can't promise right now that I'll be back next week. And given it's only me, myself and I, I can't leave someone else to do the show for me. But rest assured, I'm going to do my very best to come back next week if I can. For now, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. That was 10. Have a great weekend. And until next time, keep evolving.